Welcome to Lake Shawnee, the world's most haunted amusement park. Oh shit, that's a body bag. Located on a Native American ancient burial ground, Lake Shawnee has over 3,000 bodies buried on the property. And some believe this park was cursed, as death after death led to the park finally being shut down. I am in for more than I thought, aren't I? We don't. Well, at the moment, I can barely sit and using my right hand is extremely painful. So let's begin, because you know any adventure that ends in two trips to urgent care, numerous paranormal obscurities, and a hot pink baseball bat is gonna be a good one. So tonight I'm in Rock, West Virginia, and I'm going to be sleeping at Lake Shawnee, the most haunted, abandoned amusement park in the entire world, alone. Just between me and you, the likelihood I'm gonna pee my pants tonight is a full 10 out of 10. All right, so someone is actually coming to give me a tour of the place and tell me all the stories. So I think I'm going to go eat a little real quickly and then then it will be late and I'll be here and I will be alone. And the tour was fascinating and my guide was nice enough to share one story on camera for all of you, which ends up being one of the most important stories of my night. My name is Chris White. I am the keeper of Lake Shawnee. I wanted to tell you guys a story that happened in 1966. So the story goes, the mother drops her son off that morning. She returns in time for the lifeguard to blow the five o'clock whistle. Her son's nowhere to be found. She thinks that he walked home. She goes to the house, he's not there. She comes back to Lake Shawnee. They find him at 7 p.m. that night in the bottom of the pond with his arm stuck in a drain pipe. So some folks that visit here says that he hangs out at the front gate where you come into the park and he's watching everybody coming and going and make sure everybody stays safe. About 25 minutes later, after Chris has left for the night, I head back to the entrance and you're watching the exact moment. I think I saw that little boy who guards the entrance enter my van. Okay, but this wind is not strong. And I just watched my Ram Pro Master door open. But, oh God, mm. yes, I built this van. I have been with this van for two years. I know that door. I know how much wind it takes to open that door. The idea that something is in my van is like no wind you could see my hair at the moment that i saw it i don't even want to go into the vehicle what do i do now do i just go to where the spooky thing just happened and i guess i'm gonna go to the door now hi i'm just gonna drive we're just gonna drive look if this is all that happens tonight we're gonna say it's the wind okay we call it the wind i'm cool with saying it's the wind I don't know what to do with our newfound information, but that was at the entrance. That was at the entrance. He told me that the little boy who drowned in the lake is often seen at the entrance protecting to see and like check if people who go in are okay or not. Do I believe in, do I believe? Now all of a sudden I'm scared. <laughs> okay. Let's keep going. Okay, let's go tour the swings where a little girl died now. That'll be fun. There are numerous things Chris told me about Lake Shawnee that really stood out to me. And one of them is that he truly believes these are good spirits here. And because of that, he says they're out both day and night. Most of the people who died here are actually children. And I'm actually on my way now to visit the only marked grave on Lake Shawnee, even though more than 3000 people are buried beneath the ground here. So here's how the story of the marked grave goes. During the late 1700s, Mitchell Clay brought his family here. And in 1783, a Native American tribe came by their residence when two of the boys were out playing. When they started to attack them, their sister ran out to help. The other 11 children ran to the neighbor's house for safety. And the Native Americans killed one of the boys and the girl and kidnapped the third, a boy named Ezekiel. 
When the father came home, he assumed they had actually taken all 14 of his children and went to the tribe to find them, only to find Ezekiel burning at the stake. That's the version of the story I remember from the tour, but I highly recommend going to Lake Shawnee yourself and hearing Chris's stories. He has countless haunting stories and lots of actual videos of evidence of crazy things happening here. The craziest video he showed me though was from a security camera where an old metal lap bar with no wind raises straight up into the air at 3 a.m. with no one around. <laughs> it feels so retro. Next, I visited the Ferris wheel and swings. While no one died on the Ferris wheel, there are numerous sightings of a ghost in the same carriage. And Chris said something actually super fascinating, which is that when spirits are seen here, they're often seen as lights or orbs and in large numbers. And that it's been theorized that the Ferris wheel is like a giant dream catcher for the Native American souls that rest here. The swings, however, do not have such a lighthearted story. Honestly, there's no way to ease you into this, but a little girl got run over by a Coca-Cola truck and there are countless theories as to how this could have happened, when I think it's dismissive of the fact of how many safety violations had to have been in place here. I've worked some of the biggest attractions in the world at Disney World and Universal Studios, and safety is everything. And the things these people were doing are insane. The swings had an operator standing in the middle who just had a crank to turn the speed up and down. And the giant pool also only had one lifeguard and he was at the middle. So how was he supposed to watch the entire pool when he can only look in one direction at a time? So yeah, maybe it's spirits, but maybe it's also just basic human idiocy. I'm down at the least to say it's a little of both. So the sun is almost down and it is going to get very dark and very creepy very soon. When it does get dark, there is a haunted house over there I'm going to go in that I have not even explored that whole area over there yet. Do you ever just like look at your life and be like, what am I doing? <laughs> bigger than the boogeyman he's bigger than godzilla and the monsters on tv because god is bigger than the boogeyman that used to work when i was a kid it's not working right now i'm not gonna lie fucking shit how does it look We gotta pump ourselves up. We can do this. We can do this. I don't believe in ghosts, and the door thing was totally coincidental. No offense. Let's do this thing, guys. Fear nothing. That chair looks like an electric chair, and I'm not really vibing with it. Oh God, 3,000 people buried here. What are we doing? Okay. Okay. If this is, is there a mirror room in here? I swear. Oh God. Oh God. I can't do it. I can do it. I can do it. What is that song from Trolls? Hey, there's nothing getting in my way. So go ahead and bring me down. And if you knock, knock me over, I will get back up again. Oh, if something goes a little wrong, you can go ahead and bring it on. I will get back up again.
Okay. We can handle this. You will be led like a sheep to the slaughter, and as a lamb before its shearer, you will be silent and not open your mouth. In your humiliation, you will be deprived of justice, for your life will be taken from the earth. Well, I've never read anything scarier in my life, I'm not gonna lie to you. Um, cool, 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 totally cool. That's totally fine. Oh shit. Oh shit. That's a body bag. That is a body bag hanging from... I'm shaking. I'm not gonna lie to you. Okay. Thank God for this baseball bat. Oh shit. Oh shit. Well guys, it's been fun. It has been real fun. Oh God, they're on both sides. But that's as far as we go today. And uh, we, we definitely, we saw some things. We saw some things. We did great. Um, we did so great. But uh, Tori, Tori calls out at a uh, body bags. That's where she says that's enough for me. So, but we, we went in there. We, we went in there. We, oh, never thought I'd see that before, but um, people walked past those things. God. Oh. I I'm shaking. I'm shaking so bad right now. Exhilaration. <laughs> okay, where to next, guys? Where to next? All right, so apparently we're procrastinating going in the bus by making some bacon and french toast. Okay. <laughs> I'm so scared. Honestly, I'm a little afraid of using the flame because apparently, like, ghosts can communicate through flames. It's over my head, and I know nothing at all. All right. Did I do good? It's sizzling. Looks tasty. I, I want you all to know these questions are all rhetorical. No need to answer. All right. Actually kind of safe right now which is nice all right so if it's cool with you I would like to come in and respect your space and wow I have never been in a bus conversion before wow that is a hand that is not a joke that is a hand Nice upholstery. Um, you get a microwave in yours? Dude, you were living the good life. Um, a TV? Dude, you are doing better than me. Buses have so much more space than mine did. I don't know why you have a, have one of those in here, but uh, This is totally freaking cool. And I appreciate you allowing me to be here. Um,
and scary. I'm proud of me. The fire is still going. We're going way far out there. All right. We're going to go with it. that I feel like, I feel like I'm being, God, I feel, I feel something. And I haven't felt something, I feel like, this whole time, but I feel it, and that's crazy. So here is where 13 Native Americans were dug up, which is how they discovered it was an ancient burial ground. They found lots of items like knives and jewelry as well. One of the bodies they dug up was actually a 13-year-old girl with her child. When they discovered all of this, they wanted to put up a monument of some kind. And they felt like a purchase headstone just wasn't right, so they found this giant obelisk rock and they put it in the ground. But very quickly of its own accord, it sunk deeply into the ground and took this curved shape, which some say looks kind of like the face of a Native American chief. Thank you for letting me learn about these kind of things and learn and like not be afraid to come out here and be like, I don't know if I'm being a fool or not talking in the first place to maybe nothing, maybe everything, you know? And I think the most important thing in the world is to make a fool of yourself. Because sometimes when you make a fool of yourself, you learn the most important things and you grow the most. And I'm just glad I can be here. So thank you. So there are a lot of stories Chris has of people coming to Lake Shawnee and leaving him speechless at what those people could do or knew. This is one of them that happened at this ticket booth. Guy was just standing there like, he's like, I, I came here, I drove eight hours, I have to come and just whatever. He was like, don't tell me anything. He didn't want to know any of the stories of what had happened here. He's, and then he just went over to the swings, paced around it a few times, and sat by the swing where the little girl died. No one told him which swing it was. And then he walked over to the booth over here and then he went to go in and then I guess like without jumping, he just like got shoved back and said something pushed him out that he had no control over. I'm talking fast it's because I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking. Um, something pushed him out and then he was like, I don't belong here. And I'm gonna straight up say, if I don't belong somewhere, I am open to being told, but can we do it not in such a scary way? Please. And someday I'll be living in a big old city and all you're ever... Yeah, we don't do that. We don't. We don't. We don't like that. Um, we don't like that. We, we don't like that at all. Um, um, I got the hint. I got the hint. Please don't kill me. Please don't kill me. We're coming back. We don't want to be here. We don't want to be here. Back into the safe zone. Back into the safe zone. All right, we're just going to go right up in here. We'll never be back here again. Um, um. I didn't like that, was not a fan. She just died, she just died. That happens, that's that's how things work. I wanna take like a quick head count here. We all agree that was just a weird flashlight dying time, right? Like that was just a weird coincidence. That was not paranormal. It, I mean, it was a little bit weird. We're not gonna be that person. We're not gonna be that person. We're not making mountains out of molehills. We are not making paranormal things out of dying electronics. I do not know why I thought this was a good idea.
I'm like, mm, I'm trying really hard to make sure that I'm not doing the like confirmation bias um, where I, you know, like you think you're gonna see something, so you see something, but I can't make my flashlight die, okay? And that door thing, I might not have it on video, but I saw it. I saw it. And if you don't believe me, that's fine. Cause I was, sh I was creeped, okay? I I'll be creeped for a while. Um, I'm starting to like look back on that video though, and I will say there is quite a bit of wind behind me. So like, debunked, debunked, debunked. I, I'm just saying I am okay with being proven wrong. The last time I said that I'm okay with being proven wrong about that situation, my friend and I, we were on the phone and it just hung up. It just hung up. No one pressed anything, just hung up, lost all connection. Like. It like had, I was fine and then it hung up and I lost everything. I went into like SOS mode. It had the little satellite. Like I lost, I had no connection at all for like five minutes. And I was like, is this how it's going to be all night? Did I just say that I didn't believe in ghosts and then everything cut off? So we don't do that anymore. You probably, I went back and I watched the video and you can't see my hand is like not turning off the flashlight. So I want to prove to you that there is no way I could have pressed the button and made the flashlight go off. Like, okay, so the flashlight has like six modes and it doesn't just go on and off. It goes, there is no other option. Like dying at that time, that was the universe. I was here for how long? I did how many different things? And the exact timing led me up to it turning off right behind there. So I'm calling it a night because I just felt like I wasn't wanted there. I, I said, I literally said, if you don't want me here, let me know. And I feel like they let me know. And so I took the hint and I'm not gonna go over to the Ferris wheel. I'm not gonna go over to the swings. I locked the doors, but I don't think ghosts just like have those kind of barriers. So hopefully I'll be okay in my sleep. Actually, I think I'm going to sleep in the light. Honestly, in the daylight, looking at that booth, seeing how not far it is, having a rested rational mind, I feel like I way over, I was really getting myself in deep when I could have just calmed down and been okay. Like I had two flashlights. Come on girl, get with it. But when it's 3 a.m. and you've seen body bags and self-opening doors and everything else, your rationale starts to tell you a ghost doesn't want you here. And the thing is, none of you can tell me that I'm 100% wrong, and that's concerning. When I was in, I was in New Gorge River National Park like two days ago, and I saw this, this sign that I just felt like really encapsulated what I've been thinking about lately. And it said, and they said, they said, don't burn your cinnamon rolls. And the sign essentially said, thank yourself for allowing yourself to see this. And whether that is because you worked hard to get where you are or because you felt like quitting and you didn't, wherever you are, like thank yourself for letting yourself be there because I feel like today I could thank myself for allowing myself to have fear of coming here and doing it anyway. And, you know, getting through those weeks that were like last week where it just feels like claw and nails getting through every single thing. So. Just a reminder, I promise you, when all hope is lost, it's gonna be okay. And then you can go find a haunted house. up shop and head on out.
many people leave something of massive significance to them, and I knew exactly what I had to leave. The same thing I left at Elizabeth Proctor's memorial in Salem, Massachusetts after playing her in a recreation of the witch trials last October. A flower from my van build, a place that I built with my own two hands, that feels like a part of myself as a thank you to people who have sacrificed more than I can imagine. to the next adventure. I have no idea what it's gonna be, but I'll see you next Sunday. <laughs> so I woke up last night at 3 a.m. in a kind of pain I can't even begin to explain. Um, I was going out of my mind, like I couldn't, I couldn't think straight. Um, and I've had bug bites for days, but this one went from a normal size bite to the size of larger than a book. And so I just, my mom says that I have, my mom's a doctor and she's just like, I have no option anymore, but to go to like an urgent care and get it looked at. And it's driving me insane. Like the pain is out of control and I have no idea what bit me, but at this point, but I have no point but to go to an urgent care at this point because it's not even the only problem. I've developed this bug. This is definitely like a spider bite and this is definitely going to be okay. Um, it's just like runs down my finger weird, but like it's definitely just a spider bite. If it was just this, I'd be like, give it time. Um, but I have bug bites everywhere of all different kinds of bugs. Um, again, that's totally fine. Not a need to go to an urgent care. Um, but there are two that actually really worry me. Of course, of all places, it is on my butt, like right on my butt. So I can't even see it very well without taking a photo of it. And so that's weird. Uh, um, the other one is on my hip, like right here. And it's inside of my skin and it's a bump and that I can feel moving like around when I like touch it. I'm no idea what that is. Yeah, we should go because my mom would yell at me if she knew I was standing here making a YouTube video instead of just getting my butt to the hospital. So, let go. That's nice. They sell headstones right next to the hospital just for easy, quick, when it doesn't work out. But did you die? That is, that is, the coincidence there is too much for me to handle. So after speaking with the doctor, ends up I have cellulitis, an infected bite, and poison ivy. She gave me medication, and two days after that, I am now covered in hives everywhere. I feel like that girl in The Hunger Games that dies from tracker jackers, and according to my sister, apparently I look like it too. I edited this entire video with just my left hand, not even able to sit properly. So I am really struggling right now, but I will absolutely leave updates on my page once I'm feeling better. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next Sunday.